Hey guys, this is Ed, Paul, and Anna of Current Brand Media, and we are here to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Sportsball is a great subscription service geared towards minor league baseball fans. Each box features a different minor league team. You get a box every three months with minor league baseball gear, including different styles of hats like Ed's favorite, the dad hat. The cost is less than $12 a month. Proceeds from each box goes to More Than Baseball, the only nonprofit dedicated to the well-being of minor league baseball players. We all know that Parents' Days are coming up this summer, so if you've got a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa who are particularly difficult to buy for, but you know they're baseball fans, this is the answer, guys. Meet your new favorite team at sportsballbox.com. Is there anybody there? <laughs> three guys on my screen in front of me right and i said the name and on the screen thomas and ryan burst out laughing and and anderson his head just drops like this and <laughs> the dichotomy of those two guys delight compared to this one guy's despair was so funny What's up, Dad Hat Crew? Ed here. And on this part two episode, final episode of my conversation with Dan Simon of Studio Simon, um, you know what? We talked about the 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 interaction that he had with these Burlington Sock Puppets um, and that, that whole time when they were designing the, the logo, the team name, and all that. It was a funny conversation, guys. You guys do not want to miss that. And then also, I asked him two questions, okay? One of them, does he have a list of team names that he likes to keep on the, you know, on the wraps just in case something does ha happen? And then two, um, I asked him what the team for his minor league dream team would be, right? They hit the name, the logo, all of that. I asked him. He does answer them, guys. So you guys got to stay tuned for the episode. So, guys, without further ado, I'll give you the episode. Okay, so I want to ask you about a certain brand that um that uh you had designed um in in the Burlington sock puppets right I've had Anderson Rathbone Rathbon on the on the podcast and we talked about this and he told me the initial his initial feeling and, and this goes to what you were saying is you know at first he goes like I don't want to be known as the sock puppets and I you know he was telling me the story how you guys had that conversation with that um you know from I heard it from his point of view, but I really want to know from your point of view how that went for you guys. Uh, that was, by the way, I, I I listened to that episode. Anderson is a is a great um, podcast guest. He, he is. He's a great person, and that comes across in his um, in. I, I've heard him on several different podcasts. He's he's just a great listen, um, and. And he was great to work with. Now, by the way, he wasn't the only person I worked with. I was working with um, team owner Ryan Kerr mm -hmm. and the assistant GM Thomas Vickers. And virtually every single one of our phone calls were the th the three of them and me. When I say phone calls, Zoom, they, most of them were Zoom calls. Yep. Um, in fairness to to the um, to the medium. They were actually Google Meet calls. So uh, <laughs> shout out to Google Meet. Um, nor, we all, I think we default to Zoom, but um, they used Google Meet. Yep. And though I, I so much looked forward to those calls because those three guys together, they were like, and I, I mean this in only the most positive way. They were like the three stooges. <laughs> <laughs> They, but but not that they were stooges, but they were just so effing entertaining. You they know? are. Was, and and when that project ended, I was actually I won't call it depressed, but I was a little bit sad because it was like, wait, I these getting on calls with these guys are the highlight of my my week. You know, whenever I would get on calls with them, and when that all ended, it was like. Man, it was like losing your best friends, you know. So yeah. anyway, um, I want to say that about them. Great guys. Um, and back to your question, which was oh, about Anderson uh 
not being on board. Uh, this was such a great moment. I, I was doing my research about potential names and I, I had a list of names and I kept coming back to one name that was actually a little bit out of my um, the sphere of names that I would normally recommend to teams. In mm -hmm. minor league baseball, as you fans all know, there's some pretty crazy names out there now. Um, yep. Thanks to one of my, my, my main competitor in the minor league baseball branding uh, market. Um, and I, I tend not to get to use the word that Paul Caputo uses all the time. I tend not to get all that wacky with names. Yep. Um, you know, when you, when you think about it, Tortugas, it's not a wacky name. It's actually the Spanish word for turtles. Correct. Um, cannonballers, not a made up name, a, a cannonball and cannon, a human cannonball, a regular cannonball, human cannonball. Yep. Cannonball run. It's already an existing word. Does it make for a fun identity? Is it a fun word? Yes, but it's not a made up name. Um, the, the, the name uh, sock puppets, again, not made up, but it's a little, again, to use that word wackier than, than what I, I would normally present to a team. Yep. But for some reason I kept coming back to that. And normally I do not, um, I, I do not, I do a full on presentation of various names that I'm recommending to a team, but yeah. we, I got on a call with these guys and I, and before I had ever presented other names, I just said, I've got some other names here that are good, but I keep coming back to this one name <laughs> and I, I want to just verbally present it to you because I don't want to, I don't know if I want to waste your time going through other names when I really think this is one. Now, keep in mind, I'm on a Google Meet call. So I've got all three guys on my screen in front of right. me. And I said the name and on the screen, Thomas and Ryan burst out laughing and, and Anderson, his <laughs> head just drops like this. And <laughs> the dichotomy of... Those two guys' delight compared to this one guy's despair was so funny. And I said, what's going on? And and Anderson, he raises his head and he looked like, like somebody who had just lost his, his puppy. He um, looked dejected, didn't he? Yes, he was, it was literal despair. He, <laughs> he looked so, so crestfallen. And um, and what he explained to me was independently before I, I had ever um, mentioned this name to them, apparently Ryan and or Thomas had come up with the name um, Sock Puppets and loved it. And Ryan, I'm, I'm sorry, Anderson hated it. <laughs> and uh, and. Now, fortunately, what I was able to do with that was the the first the first presentation I did to them once that name was decided was going to be the name had only one sock puppet in it, and it was mm -hmm. the sock puppet with the stirrup. Yep, on it. And Anderson saw that and loved it, and so that was <laughs> that got him on board with it because he saw, hey. This doesn't have to be stupid or crazy or whatever. He he really loved it. But Thomas and Ryan didn't love it. Because what? They, yeah, because they had a crazier idea for what sock puppets would be. And they said, we want to see a, um, a, a a cool sock puppet. And they, yeah. were, they, they then, after seeing my... My stirrup guy, they they then got specific. They said, can he be wearing sunglasses and can he have his cap on backwards? And I said, yes. And I I did that one for them. And Ry, um, Anderson then saw that and said, I like this other guy. And 
Then Anderson said, can we have both? And I said, sure, why not? Because think about, well, for those of you who might know some of my other logos, the um, the Modesto Nuts, I did that identity, yep. I think something like 15 years ago. And there were two nuts in that. Um, there's an almond and there's a walnut in their prime in their uh, primary logo. Prior to that, I had done what was going to be the logo for the team that's now the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. They were originally supposed to be the New Hampshire primaries yeah. um, and named after the political primaries that take place. In, the very first voting that happens. Right. An election. Uh, yeah. Right. So. Uh, now, in fairness to the Iowa caucuses, which is another alternate identity I've done, that happens prior to the New Hampshire primaries, but it's not a primary. It is it is a caucus. And if you ask me to explain the difference, um, you're asking the wrong guy. So let, <laughs> Let's not even go there. Exactly. Uh, let people who, who uh, majored in political science or whatever else uh, answer that one. But um, uh, that one has an elephant and a donkey in it because of the two symbols of the political parties. And then, uh, and then, and then I also did one for a, a, uh, a collegiate summer league team, the East Texas pump jacks that also has a donkey in it and a dinosaur. So, wow. um, so when they asked me when, when Anderson said, can I, can we have both of them? It's like, sure. Why not? And so their logo features, those two and that's the story behind why it features both of those socks interesting i love that that's that's so good because you know he was telling me the story he goes like no i i hated it and i'm like then i loved it i'm like and i could not imagine being no, something else other than the sock puppets and you know and to be honest with you like it you know as soon as i saw it i automatically fell in love with the logos and it, it's it's great right i have I think I have like three or four of the that hats of those logos, like even the B I have it as well. So love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the cool things about that brand is what the team did is they set up, I'm assuming they still have it. I know they did this for the first season, mm -hmm. but they set up a, a space in, in the stadium where fans, they had all these materials out, socks and things to attach to them where fans can make their own sock puppets. And one of the things that they told me was opposing players would come and want to make their own sock puppets. So Still do. Yeah. So it's um, it's it's it, you might think when you've got some of these, again, to use Paul's word, wacky names for teams, you might think that's off putting to some of the players. You know, these are you know, in the case of the Burlington sock puppets, it's collegiate um, athletes, but you, so you've got collegiate athletes you, and you've got professional athletes wearing this stuff. And you might think they're, they might be put off by that, but um, I, I, I've been told by the Savannah bananas as well, that opposing players, they see them all the time in the, in their merchandise store Um because they want stuff. So absolutely players like it as well. And yeah. You know, it's, it's fun. Why not? Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Is It's fun. And for opposing players who really go and make sock puppets for themselves, why not? Right. I mean, that's the fun of baseball. That's why I love baseball so much because you can have fun while still, you know, playing the sport. It's a kid's game. Let's be honest. Yep. Um, okay. So let me ask you this, uh, as far as your, you are concerned, do you, do you have a list of like certain names or logos that you have set up aside that you're hopefully one day you'll be able to um, to use uh, with a with a team? Actually, that's a really good question. I've never been asked before. Um, I, I actually don't like when people say that's a really good question because it's like, of course, they're good questions. <laughs> you know, all the questions are good questions. But that's something I've never been asked. And interestingly, I do have, I do have a list, but that list was made a long time ago um, before really the current landscape of, of branding became what, what it is. Yeah. Uh, because 
And so a lot of those names now won't apply. And I'll tell well, wow, this actually just came up last night. My my wife and I were watching some tennis on TV, and I didn't know who this one player was. And my I said, Who is that guy? And my wife said his his last name is something like D Mentor, something like that. And I said, it should have been D Minotaur Minotaur. And Ooh. that and the reason I was thinking of that is because on this list of teams that um that of, of potential team names that that I want that I have but was made a long time ago was the Minotaurs. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Minotaur is or was, it's something with either Greek or Roman mythology. It is this beast that I believe lived underground and people were fed to it, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, and I thought back then I thought, well, that'd make a really cool team name. But nowadays teams would not go with something like that because especially in minor league baseball, where it's a, you would think minor league baseball is first about baseball, but a lot of team operators will tell you, no, it is about family fun, family entertainment first, with baseball as like a a, a byproduct. Of, yeah, of, and and that you know what that it, it is very much what minor league baseball is, and a minotaur is something this beast that would would not just kill people but probably rip them to pieces. <laughs> right. Uh, is not really what you want to base your your identity around. Um, so some of the names that maybe in the past think about think about what names were before sports branding was a thing. You, like the Detroit Tigers and the Chicago Bears, they they made good sports team names then because you were what they wanted to get across was that our players are tough um, right. and a lion and a bear and a jaguar and a tiger um, the, and a bulldog and all of those things. They, they're, they're tough animals. And so they reflect how we want our athletes to be. Now athletes do need to be tough regardless of the sport, regardless of its play, whether it's played by men or women, you need to be tough in sports, any sport, mm-hmm. but the identities need to be a, a little more, especially in minor league baseball, a little more, a lot more fan friendly. So, yeah. um, so I do have a list, but the the other thing about that that list is, especially in minor league baseball, where a in my estimation, uh, a good brand identity should be specific to the commu- that particular community in which that team plays. You can't have a list of names already that you just attach to that community these names like like the sock puppets that's born out of the fact that burlington north carolina was once the hosiery capital of of the the south yep. um, the cannapolis cannonballers are called the cannonballers after the cannon mill that's the reason that that city even exists um etc cetera, etc cetera. They, right. th- these these names ideally are born out of something that's specific to that community or region uh, or city. And uh, so having an existing list, you know, every now and then there might be a name that, that works for it, uh, works for a, a team, but the name first has to come out of what that specific community um, bears out. Yeah, I got you. Okay. All right. One last question before I go into my famous, not so famous questions here. So let's say that you, and I'm I'm sure a lot of other people have done this, but like, let's say that you are creating your own minor league team. Do you have a name, a team name? Have you ever created a team name and logo for a, a, a team that you would potentially you want to own in, you know, in this, you know, fantasy world that we live in? Um, one of the hardest things to do is for I think 
virtually every designer will say, will say this. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest things for a designer to do is to design for his or herself. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I have had a bear of a time uh, coming up with my own logo. And I, I, I'm actually thinking about changing my current logo. Uh, and I, I just recently designed something actually two things for different clients where I'm thinking, why can I design something I like so much for them, but I can't do the same thing <laughs> for me. So um, when it comes to, if I had a team, I've got to say, and maybe this is a, a, a little bit of a nurse. I, I don't consider myself a nar narcissist, but um, other people might have a, a different opinion about that. But um, this is definitely a narcissistic thing. If I had a team, I'd want it called the dance. And there's actual, put my, my name's Dan. So yeah. there's actually a collegiate summer league team uh, that plays not that far from here called the Dansville Dance. Mm -hmm. And that right there, that's the, I would want that to be my team. I would want the city named after me. I want the team named after me. And the Dansville Dance already has that. So um if, if any Dansville Dan's uh, employees are listening to this podcast, please send me a Dansville Dan's cap and jersey. Thank you. Let's let's do it. I'm going to I'm going to work on that so we can get you that going uh, a hat and, uh, and a jersey for you. All right, my friend. Um, are you ready? Oh, well, first of all, let me ask you this. Is there anything that I have not asked or um, anything that you want to uh, share with us right now before I go into my famous, not so famous questions? Uh, you know what? Uh, you've asked great questions. I've enjoyed hearing the questions and answering them. So uh, I think you've done your job. Okay, perfect. Love it. I'd love to hear that. All right, so here we go. Are you ready? I am ready, willing, and able. Let's go. Okay, so your favorite superhero growing up? My favorite superhero growing up was Captain America. Gotcha. Is it still yeah. your favorite superhero? Yeah, and this is way, way, way before there were ever movies, but there was just something about Captain America I liked. Maybe because uh, it's America. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, so um, what's your favorite fruit? Bananas. Love bananas. Although, if I'm not mistaken, I think bananas might be categorized as a vegetable and tomatoes are categorized as a fruit. Somebody, I'm, I'm going to have to Google that after we're done here, but... It's still a fruit, you know, so yep. I'm, even if it's not technically fruit, bananas, love bananas. Bananas are so good. They should be bad for you. That's the way I, I meaning <laughs> they're so tasty. Like when I was a little kid growing up and I wanted a snack, my mom would say, well, why don't you have a piece of fruit? It's like, I don't want a piece of fruit. I want <laughs> a, a cupcake or something like that. But um, I, I like bananas so much. They they should be bad for you. Like stop eating those. Um, you shouldn't eat so many. They're not good for you. That's how good they are. They're good, but good on potassium. It's a good, it's a good fruit to have. Um, okay. So who was the most interesting person you've ever met? Um, aside from you? Well, absolutely. Aside from me. Yes. The most interesting person I ever met. You know what? Um, I mentioned earlier in our conversation here, mm -hmm. my, my friend, Peter Thornburg, coworker, friend. Um, un unfortunately, he, he passed away because of a mysterious illness. They don't even know what, but Peter was the smartest, funniest, most interesting person I, I have ever met. So Peter, if you're up there, you're the one. I love it. I love to hear that. Okay. Do you, what's your favorite? Well, actually, what is your spirit animal? Um, now, I've heard the term spirit animal. Can you describe, but I have to claim ignorance here. What exactly? So, for example, for me, my wife tells me that my spirit animal is a rooster because it's very colorful and very loud. <laughs> well, I, you know what, having not thought about this, I don't know if I can tell you what my spirit animal is, but I've heard 
people ask the question, if you can come back as an animal, okay. what, would it, what would it be? So Let's if that. that might be your spirit animal, um, my answer to that question is a bald eagle. Ooh, nice. I like that one. Yeah, I think I think everybody would would love to be able to fly. Not only do eagles fly, they soar. Um, if you're a regular bird, you eat worms. Not that appealing to me, but eagles are carnivores. So mm -hmm. I like that aspect. <laughs> and they're bald and we like them for that. So um, there you and go. There's some, they're the symbol of our country. So they kind of, uh, they check off a lot of positive boxes for me. Absolutely. All right, a couple more here. All right, would you rather go bungee jumping or skydiving? Um, I would, I don't ever plan on doing either, but if I had, <laughs> to, choose, if I had to choose one, uh, I think skydiving. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would do skydiving first before I do bungee jumping. Uh, a couple more here. Okay. Um, what is one thing that you would change about your daily routine? Hmm. <laughs> well, I, you know what? Uh, again, you guys listening can't see this, but I've got uh, a scruff of a beard, which I always have at least this much, but I need to, um, I still have to like trim it on the neck and all right and so, around here. Yeah. Right in the bottom. Right. Oh yeah. That's annoying. I, I, I'd like to not have to do that every morning. Yeah. So. A, it, it, yeah. It just, it gets itchy. And then it just like, looks like, you know, looks like you're scruffy and all that. I get it. I understand that. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So let's see here. What is one thing you would, you, you wish it could, you know, actually exist something, uh, a, a program or a show or uh, actual physical thing that, that will exist, but is, but it doesn't exist at the moment. Now you mentioned like a, a show or a program. Can it be anything, anything, anything at all? Um, time travel. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I would, I actually think about this. Like I would, not that I don't like living in the now, mm -hmm. but I would, I would definitely like to go back and see things that I didn't get to see because I wasn't born in time. So, mm -hmm. uh, or even go back to some of the earlier years and see things I've already seen that I'd like. So time like travel help. And, and in addition to that, like in Star Trek, where they have that, um, I apologize. The the transporter that lets yeah, you yeah 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 the, the exactly that will automatically you know beam you up yeah um, that'd be pretty freaking cool <laughs> that that would be good it was like you know we don't have to travel on by car or by plane anymore just boom at the snap of a finger off you go yeah yeah I like that all right one last one here my friend um, what is your dream vacation my dream vacation you know what my speaking of i mentioned my wife earlier and uh we've been talking a lot about vacations because i'm not much of a my, my wife loves travel unfortunately she married somebody who who didn't love travel but for some reason lately i've gotten this bug in me maybe it's 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 the uh the effects of how long we were holed up because of coronavirus yeah um I just want to get out there and see things. And I've always wanted to go to Scotland. Oh, so, that's nice. Um, and I can't even really tell you why other than I've, I've just, maybe it's, I love the way Scottish people talk. I love their accent and, you know, seeing pictures in whether it's in movies or still photos of the, you know, the, the Scottish countryside and the castles and all of those things for some reason it's i've always it's always appealed to me and we're we're trying to plan a trip there so that I, that would be my my dream vacation um yeah scotland love it love it you definitely would if you go you gotta wear a kilt right like i mean it's one of those things you have to do <laughs> while you're there right <laughs> uh you know what i didn't think about that but um yeah if if i wonder if they frown upon like look down their noses at tourists who doing that wear, wear kilts but if uh if they're okay with it then i'm okay with it i love it love it dan 
Thank you so much for doing this. I had an absolute wonderful blast. I learned a lot. I definitely learned something that I didn't know about uh, when it comes to branding uh, when you know new era, the field, you know, colors and all that. So thank you for all the information. Um, where can people find you on uh, on social media? I am only on Instagram, and that's studio underscore Simon. Um, I've got a website studio simon.net and i believe you can get there via .com as well um but i'm social media wise just just instagram gotcha I, and i will make sure that i put all the information so that way that people can go ahead and uh, and find you again thank you so much and then uh, i'll keep an eye out for all all of your your future projects coming out here soon well thank you for having me on um this was a lot of fun for me as well so uh I really appreciate it. I hope you have uh, uh, a great rest of your your day and weekend and life. So thank you, Ed. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Dan. Now, make sure you guys are following him, okay? Instagram and uh, uh, on his uh, website. A lot of cool stuff. He, he puts a lot of his work out there so you guys are able to see it. Uh, so make sure you guys are following him. Um, before I go, just you know, a couple of things to take care of. Make sure you guys are uh, following the podcast. Uh, give it five stars if you don't mind. Uh, five stars means that go up on the rankings. Go up on the rankings. That means more people get to uh, listen to it just like you. Okay? Uh, and then uh, check me out on my YouTube channel. I got a lot of other content in there, little shorts and uh, my my Wheel of Deadheads with my, uh, with my little uh, monster. Uh, and then um, unboxing videos. All right. Now that I got that part out of the way, let's get to the important stuff. It, that is the joke of the episode. And here it is. What has four wheels and flies? A garbage truck. All right. All right. I see myself out. And until then, guys, keep on grinding and always support the minor leagues. See ya. This podcast is part of the Curved Brand Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brand Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna DiTomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series, and in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. This is Patrick and Corey of BaseballMapper.com, and we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball, so get on the site and find a team near you today. Learn more about Curve Brand Media at CurveBrandMedia.com. <laughs>